Hi there, I'm Reverend Linda, and today I'm going to share with you a booklet by James A. Decker. You may know him from his book, A Magnificent Decision. Today, we're going to look at the pamphlet, God's Ideas Are Yours. This is a little bit longer than what we usually read, so I invite you to sit back and get comfortable. I believe at the end of this, we'll all walk away with a brighter and better prosperity con consciousness. Ready? Here we go. God's ideas are yours. You can achieve whatever you want to achieve. You can be as successful as you want to be. You can pay your debts, get a new home, have more pleasant surroundings, more harmony in your home, a good car, whatever you desire. All the good things you desire are included in your prosperity. And God stands ready to give you prosperity whenever your faith opens a channel for you to receive it. How does God give you prosperity? Of course, he does not cause a new car to appear at the curb in front of your house. He does not mysteriously set up a new bank account for you with thousands of dollars for you to draw on. God does not do his mighty works in such ways. And actually, you should be glad that he does not. For he makes his good available to you in a much better way. Yes, a perfect way. He opens his storehouse of infinite substance to you, from which you can receive more liberally, more abundantly than you can ever visualize. Instead of setting a new car in your garage, God tells you how to do that which makes it possible, the acquisition of as many new cars as you could ever use, not just one, but as many as you need and desire not just this year, but next year and all the years to come. Instead of setting up a liberal bank account for you to in a downtown bank, God sets up an inexhaustible account in which you can draw for the knowledge, skill, and in ingenuity necessary to do anything you want to do. Sell vacuum cleaners, bake a cake, Cultivate a field, write a poem, build a bridge. Ah, you may say, you are talking about ideas when you speak of God's giving me whatever I want. You refer to something intangible, something I can't put my finger on. That's all very well, but I'm interested in something real. And I say to you, Yes, you are right. When I say that God will give you any good thing you desire, I mean that he will give it to you in the form of an idea. But mark this and mark it well. There is nothing more tangible than an idea. Use it. I'm sorry. You can't put your finger on it, but you can put your whole body and soul into it. You can take an idea and use it. And if you use it for all it's worth, there is no limit to the material good you will derive from it. Would you say you want something tangible? Are you sure you know what the dictionary definition of the word tangible is? True, there is the commonly accepted definition, capable of being touched, perceivable to the touch, palatable, but read on. The next sentence reads, capable of being realized by the mind, substantial, objective, by any definition of the word, an idea is tangible. You can feel an idea. Have you not had the experience of an idea hitting you when you are deep in thought, searching for a solution or an original approach to a problem? The right idea comes to your mind and the impact is, we say, almost physical. Almost 
it is a physical sensation. The exactly right idea at the crucial moment has a thrilling, electrifying quality. It clears the cobwebs from your brain like an invigorating sweep of cool, clean air. It makes you feel alive. It makes you tingle. It brushes away fatigue like a good night's sleep. Yes, an idea is tangible. It is perceivable, palpable. You cannot reach out and touch an idea. It reaches out and touches you. It reaches inside and grasps you with the mighty power and force. An idea is God touching you, speaking to you, telling you the earth-shaking secret that you need to know in order to achieve, to do, to be. Would you not gladly forgo all of all thought of today's bank account, no matter how large, if you had access to the magic power to build a bank account of any size in any bank at any time, you have access to that power, but it is not a magic power. It is the simple ordered power of unfailing principle. Therein lies its everlasting value to you. It is law. It is principle. It operates surely and smoothly without possibility of failure or error factor whenever you put it into practice. God's fund of ideas is unlimited. Unlike a bank account, it has never varying currency and cannot be overdrawn. No matter if you claim and put it to use today, an idea that brings you a raise in salary or a new job or a new home or any other of the desires of your heart. Tomorrow, God's fund is just as full of ideas that are just as potent. Drawing on his fund does not cause the fund to diminish. It only makes you better able to draw on his fund for more good. It is essential that you fix firmly in your mind the value of ideas, because if you do not believe, believe and not merely agree that ideas are the gold coin of God's kingdom, you are likely to throw away a fortune. Ideas come to you almost constantly. The closer your contact with God is, the more ideas you will receive. But unless you recognize an idea when it comes and realize its potential value, you are apt to let it pass from your mind as effortlessly as it came, unused, wasted. You would never reject or forget an idea if you could see the infinite possibilities contained in it. Thus, the first step in claiming the prosperity of God is seeing ideas for what they really are, blueprints that show you how to build success, detailed maps that lead you to all the buried treasure of the ages. If you accept this teaching as the truth of God, which it is, what then? You believe that God is ready to give you the riches of the kingdom in the form of ideas, ideas that will show you how to make money, how to improve your environment, how to get along with your associates, how to choose the right wallpaper for the living room. For even in mundane matters, the ideas of God are available and efficient. You believe this, you have faith that an inexhaustible store of ideas, ideas that will achieve every good thing is available to you. How are you to tap this rich store? The answer is simple. You get ideas by thinking. If you have a sure abiding faith in God and a conscious realization of what ideas can mean to you, you only have to start thinking. No conditions, you ask? None. 
God never conditions his promises or qualifies his laws. The only conditions to their fulfillment are in the mind of the person praying. Jesus said, all things, whatever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. Once you know what you want, know the source of what you want, and are resolved to use what you get for good, just pray, believing, and begin to think. God's ideas will come to you. Will the ideas you need come instantly? Perhaps. Tuning to God is in faith often brings about instantaneous solution to even the naughtiest problem. Immediately useful ideas that serve to accomplish the desired result in a matter of hours or even minutes. Sometimes your subconscious mind does the necessary work while you sleep. If the desired idea does not come to your mind immediately, that does not mean that God has turned down your request or delayed your answer. It means rather that the early developments in what you are seeking to achieve are taking place in a way that you do not yet perceive that God is causing certain necessary things to happen before the results are apparent to you. God's promise to give you the ideas that will prosper you is not a conditional promise, but it is possible to set up conditions that will make you more receptive to his ideas, more cognizant of the potentialities of the ideas that come. The most helpful condition is quietness, not an isolated, withdrawn silence, but an inner quiet that emphasizes the voice of God, the serenity and balance that Peter spoke of as an imperishable jewel of a gentle, quiet spirit. Another New Testament writer, James, remarked that the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceful. A time of silence is desirable. It is in fact essential to every Christian. When you begin consciously to seek the ideas that will make over your life, you may find it necessary to withdraw to some quiet place to do your thinking. Certain periods of withdrawal will always be helpful. But as you gain experience in claiming God's ideas and putting them into use, you will become more adept at turning to him under any circumstance or in any surroundings. You will learn how to be quiet within, though the clamor without and about you be ever so great. Such inner quietness provides the condition of highest receptivity to God's ideas. Another condition that makes for receptivity and that you can establish is that of harmony. You cannot receive new ideas if your mind is cluttered with old ideas of dissension, envy, and jealousy. You will have to start, stop wondering why your neighbor's home is nicer than yours if you expect to receive the ideas that will make possible a finer home of your own. You will have to stop asking, why did he get that promotion? If you want God to tell you how to get a promotion of your own, when God sees that you have attuned your mind to his and are concentrating on your own good, instead of jealous, jealously comparing it with your fellow man's good, he will begin to pour into your mind the marvelous currency of good ideas. Any negative condition that you allow to affect you impedes the flow of ideas between God mind and your mind. Thinking about your present lack leaves you no time for the thinking that produces ideas leading to prosperity. Fixing your thoughts on last year's failure keeps you from concentrating on tomorrow's promotion 
Worrying about the debts you owe sets up a mental block that interferes with your receiving ideas that will enable you to pay off those debts. As in every application of truth, the process of claiming God's ideas involves denials and affirmations. You must deny the limiting thoughts of lack, failure, and disharmony. You must affirm that ideas have tangible, useful power to change your life and that all the ideas you need are instantly available in divine mind. That you can get and use the ideas you need without straining or striving. I invite you to try this method. It is not a formula. It is much too simple to be called a formula. It is just a way to achieve God's way, the only sure way. The wonderful thing about this method is that you can use it without any previous experience whatsoever, with nothing on your credit but faith in God. You can get the ideas that will change lack into abundance, failure to success, poverty to riches, in harmony to harmony, a dull humdrum experience into an exciting, thrilling new way of life. Try it. Try it right now. Use whatever affirmation you wish and turn your mind to God. God the good is all there is. Or God is, or thy will be done. Once you are free of the little inconsequential conflicting fragments that habitually pass for thoughts in the minds of most of us, apply your real thoughts consciously to whatever you want to achieve. Perhaps you will get a brilliant, thrilling idea within minutes. Perhaps the idea you confidently seek will spring into your consciousness tomorrow morning after your subconscious mind has put it through its work tonight. All you have to do now, all you ever have to do, is to start thinking with the faith that you are attuned to the infinite mind of God. When you do this, you cannot fail. You can only succeed. You can go in only one direction, forward. Your life will know no more of lack, but only prosperity. You will exchange disharmony, worry, envy, fear, and all the other troubling, upsetting emotions for the perfect balance of a life that is in divine order and adjustment. All this you will achieve. Because God's ideas are yours. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you'll take a moment and comment on our video, on the reading, on your prosperity consciousness. You are important to us, and we would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for being with us today. God bless. Thank you for joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook, search for Unity Church of El Cajon and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos and leave comments which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters, which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.